Okay, in this video, we're going to show that any group G cannot be a union of two proper subgroups. Okay, so say on the contrary that G is equal to the union of A and B, where both A and B are subgroups, proper subgroups of G, right? So then we have a dismantle picture in our mind that G is a union of two proper subgroup A and B okay and then since A is a proper subgroup or B is a proper subgroup then we can find an element in A which is not belong to B and vice versa we can find an element in B which is not belong in A right since it's proper right so a is not the whole of g meaning we can find another element outside of a similarly we can find an element outside of b so let's call a is an element in a but not in b and b an element in b but not in a so we can ask the question what's going on with a times b remember that g is a group since a is in g and B also is in G, so clearly, since a group is close under multiplication, then AB must be in G, correct? But G is A union B, so if AB is in union A and B, then AB must be in A or in B, right? So that's the only option we have. Now, if a, B in A, we can write A times B is equal to X for a certain X in A, right? Now, remember that A is an element in A, hence the A inverse is also an element in A. So if we multiply with A inverse to the left, then we have B is equal to A inverse X, which is an element in A, since A inverse and X are in A. But the this leads to a contradiction since B is not in A. And similarly, we can argue like above. If we have A, B equals to Y, then A is Y, B inverse, which is an element in B, but we already knew that A is not in B. So that's another contradiction. So A, B cannot be in A and cannot be in B, right? But that's not possible since G is A union B. So then G cannot be equal to the union of two proper subgroups for any A and B proper subgroups of G. Okay, so that's it. It's not that difficult. Thank you for watching. See you again on the next video. Bye.